Hello, everybody. How are you? Hope you're having a great Sunday. This is Bill from AT Makers. Um, I'm going to give you guys a couple of seconds here to come on and, uh, and join me. So I hope you guys are, are having a, a good weekend. Uh, I do want to talk to you about a couple of interesting things today. We have a date set for our Adaptathon, and I probably need to be uh, uh, asking for something I don't usually do. We're probably going to have to ask you guys to cough up some cash. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. If you are here, say hi in the comments so I know that this thing's working and if you can hear me okay, because that's always an issue. Uh, but I wanted to get started and, and start by sh sharing what this is about. Last year we had a Adaptathon. Uh, let me see if I can share that with you. So last year, yep. Yeah. Last year we had an Adaptathon in um, uh, Orlando at uh, Factor, which is a makerspace in Orlando, and we had two different groups plus some some uh, individuals join us. We had Roaring Riptide from Gainesville and Gravy from Orlando uh, join us to adapt toys, which we then donated to Fast, uh, the the um, Tech Act program here in Florida, to distribute to uh, students who needed switch adapted toys for Christmas. And actually, it was it was a lot of fun. It was an opportunity for um, the kids to do something that wasn't competitive. They worked together. The two teams did. Um, we taught lots of people how to solder, uh, grown-ups and kids. Uh, and we got a lot done. We got 110 toys uh, adapted and re-wrapped so that they could be uh, presented. Or I guess they weren't really wrapped in paper, but they were wrapped back in their original packaging. So they looked exactly like they did. Uh, when they came out of the uh, out of the boxes. In fact, let me uh, show you here. This is one of the ones we adapt the most. One of my favorites. You've probably heard me talk about it before. It's the fart gun. It is um, definitely one of the biggest hits we have here, and it's something where it's e relatively easy to adapt. We can actually put a, a jack right here. This one's not adapted yet. But we put a hole right here with a little plug, a little jack where you can stick the uh, AT switch in. And it works the switch just like uh, just like the trigger does, and uh, we like teaching the kids about. There's a hidden there's a hidden uh, little trick in it. So we do that one. We do Minnie Mouse. We do um, oh my pal Scouts. We do a whole bunch of different ones. I think we did about twelve different ones last year. I think we're going to take a couple off the list this year because they were um, they were kind of painful. Let me switch this here. So this is. Uh, uh, a walkthrough that Lori and I did when we went around and introduced kind of what we were doing. So I thought I'd share that while uh, while we talked about it. Um, so it was a great event. It was a, great for the kids. The end result was fantastic. In fact, it was good enough that this year we are expanding it. It is bigger this year. Um, we are going to have it in a different location. Gravy, the one of our robotics teams, is actually housed at the Orange Technical College in uh, Orange County, which is near, uh, which is Orlando. And uh, they have a fantastic facility. Uh, it's air conditioned, which is a nice shift. Uh, nothing against Factor. They did a great job last year. Uh, but this is going to be a little easier because we're going to have a bigger crew. So they've got the, the, um, uh, the tables and the electrician, electricity is already set up. They've kind of got a great, a great setup there. Um, I was mentioning the fact that we're going to have more people. So this year we're going to have a lot more hands. Um, and I don't see any comments. So one of the things I, I do want to check here, I want to go ahead and look at uh, whether or not there are comments. Sometimes there are comments that I don't see until I go looking. So let me real quickly take a break and make sure you guys don't have questions for me. And no, nothing yet. All right. Maybe everybody's enjoying their Saturday. That's perfectly awesome. So. Uh, but this year we are actually going to have more kids. So we have Gravy and Riptide, uh, which were with us last year. Those are two FRC teams in Florida. And um, when we talked to other groups in the area, it was popular. So this year we'll also add Roaring Robotics from Port Ritchie, Florida. Uh, Super 7, which is an FTC team from uh, Orlando. Exploding Bacon, I think, will be joining us. They're out of the eastern side of Orlando. They're a 4-H team, and actually, they're the uh, founders of First Like a Girl, which will be really exciting to work with them. We also have the WC group, uh, the Women in Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Florida, 
as well as UF's bots and grip team. So bots is building others through STEM and grip is generational relief in prosthetics. They make um, adapted uh, gaming controllers. So we'll have all of these groups want to participate and want to be involved. So we're going to let them. We're, go we're going to invite them and we're going to have a lot of hands. So this new venue lets us do that. And it's going to give us the ability to do quite a bit more. Now, last year we focused on toys. Um, and I think uh, we'll certainly do a lot of toys this year. But I think we'll probably end up having to add some other things. Uh, one of the things that we've gotten a lot of requests for is, can you support Switch users that are older, still want Christmas presents, but don't necessarily want a My Pal Scout or a Fart Blaster, although everybody wants a Fart Blaster. But uh, other than the Fart Blaster, maybe that's not the... Uh, there are people who want older toys or older things. So we're going to try and do some um, dice rollers in case somebody's into D&D &D or something like that. But also we're going to try and make some things that are more um, uh, older. So we have some things I want to show you. Noah and Chris, glad you could join me. Good to see you. So um, we have some things that are for older students and older people who are Switch users. We've got um, these little lights that notify people when they are um, uh, want to raise their hand in class and things like that. And here's another smaller version of it right here uh, that, that flips on your, your lap, clips on your laptop. Uh, these are great. They use the Adafruit uh, components to, to work. And uh, these are something that if you're in class and you're a Switch user, it's a good way for you to get um, attention, get somebody's attention. Um, we have Switches. So this year, in addition to giving toys, we're going to be giving Switches. We have, you guys have seen this one, our 3D printed Switches. We'll make a bunch of these at the Adaptathon. Uh, we also have two other designs for switches that are kind of in beta, but will certainly done, be done by November. I didn't mention the date. The date's November 25th uh, is when we'll do that. Uh, we're working on a light touch switch here. Uh, this is larger than like the micro light, but has the same super light touch here. So we'll have this one. There's also a switch by Scott Doherty, which we may uh, include as well as a micro light, a micro light as a replacement for the micro light. So um, finally, we have the switch interfaces. So these are uh, very easy to make. Basically, you take the PCB that we had made, you put on five jacks on the bottom and a trinket on the top, and then put it in one of these awesome little cases. And you'll see um, this makes a really kind of kick-ass switch interface, right? So you get five switches that go in there. Um, you, you can program them to work as keyboard or mouse or joystick switches. Um, so it's, it's really very, very flexible. And we can make any of these very, very inexpensively. So this guy is about uh, $15 for all the parts. This guy is about 10. This one's about uh, 30. These guys are each about uh, five for the switches. So our parts is not uh, they're not expensive individually, and of course the labor is, this is why we're doing the Adaptathon, the Makeathon, is that we are trying to use the labor out of these, uh, out of these robotics teams. So this year we're going to be making things that are um, not just the toys at the Adaptathon. Now, this brings us to me begging for money, and I am not good at begging for money. Uh, Lesson Picks, as most of you know, is reasonably self-funded, right? So uh, Lesson Picks is a big uh, advertiser and a supporter of ours. Uh, they pay for things like our tables in exchange for signage. Uh, that's convenient since I'm one of the co-founders of Lesson Picks. Uh, and then our own family has donated quite a bit, as has uh, another family here in the Tampa area, the Griffiths. So. We generally don't ask for uh, donations. We, you can certainly make donations and we'll be glad to accept them. Most of our projects, we have been able to partner with other groups uh, to either get the space or to get uh, the materials necessary for the event. This one's a little different. So this one, in order to, to adapt the toys, we are asking any of our partner groups who, who have kids who need toys to provide the unadapted toys and we will adapt them for free. But when we're talking about things like um, like the switch interfaces, um, we kind of have to 
stop. We have to make these. They're not something you can buy off the shelf and then adapt. You got to start from scratch and make them. And there is going to be a, um, a, a cost associated to this that is beyond, I think, given the demand we're seeing, it's going to be beyond what we can just fund internally. So I am officially here to ask you guys to help us out. Um, we probably need about $1,500 to $2,000 for this event. That would, If we did that, we could give every kid who gets a toy could also get a Switch. And any kid who wants one could get a uh, Switch interface for their computer. Now, anybody who's ever bought a Switch interface knows that the least expensive of these are about $100. Now, that's crazy. But it's what it is what it is. If you go to AbleNet or uh, Don Johnson or any of the AT, um, $100 isn't obscene like some AT things are, but it's still it's still pricey. And we can make it for $15. Um, the correct price is probably about $50 bucks for this. Um, but if you are... Um, if you can see the value in this, it means you've been in AT long enough to know that this is a, a big deal. So we're going to give these away to anybody who wants them. Um, so one of the things I'm going to offer is if anybody makes a donation of $100, you can have your pick. So if you'd like a, um, we will send you either a switch interface or uh, an AT switch of your choice, one of the... Um, one of the notifiers. Um, any of these are the things that we're going to be making in addition to the toys. Oh, or you can have a toy and you can tell us which of the toys you'd like. Uh, and we'll be happy to send you one uh, in, th in thanks for your donation. So it, you could make them cheaper. You could go to your local robotics team and give them our designs and say, hey, can you make me a switch interface? And I hope you do that instead. If, if the reason you're doing this is to get one, by all means, uh, let, let us help you find a team and make one. But if you want to support AT Makers in general, I'm very happy to send you uh, any of these things as a thank you. Uh, Ren Lucia says, can we donate switches along with money? Yeah. Um, so if you've, got, um, if you've got switches that you've made, by all means, um, let me know what... Uh, uh, what uh, design they are. Are they one of our designs or are they another one that I need to be looking at? For example, I didn't really know about Scott's until the other day. Or are they like AT switches that you have extras of, like the, like the microlights? Yes, by all means, you can donate switches instead and we'll be happy to write you a receipt uh, for in, an in-kind donation. Um, we are, for those of you who don't know, we are a 501c3 uh, entity. So anything you give to us uh, is a charitable donation. Whether you can write it off or not is entirely between you and your tax official. This year, things have changed, so most of you will not um, will not be itemizing your deductions this year. But if you do, we certainly count as a charitable donation, and uh, we would love to to have that. Um, I will tell you that we are going to. Uh, I've put a link in this thing that sends you to a page on atmakers.org. If you click there and make a donation on that page, it will only go to this event. It won't be used for overhead or insurance or anything else. It will only be used to buy things for this event. Uh, so we're, we're happy to do that. Um, in addition, if any of you have, um, if you have uh, uh, donor-advised trusts, if you have matching things for your work, tell us. Uh, we always are happy to take money in any way that is legal appropriate but uh, if there's paperwork we need to fill out or things like that tell us we are very happy uh, to do that and we always we, we put money to the money you give to, to this organization goes a very very long way um, because most of what we do is already uh, we already have people who pay for all the overhead stuff um, in the form of my companies and, and a, a couple other ones here in town so um, if you have a chance, by all means, pre please um, please donate to the link in below. Also, we probably will have more resources and uh, hands than we have demand for. So if you're in Florida, this is easy. If you're out of Florida, it's a little bit harder. But if you've got kids who need um, toys adapted, basically the rule is, 
you buy the toys. Now, we'll, we can buy them, but you pay for the toys. Um, we will adapt them and we will ship them to you uh, or get them to you somehow. Uh, our, we can't afford to buy all the toys because some of them are $30 toys. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, we can't adapt $130 toys and eat that cost. Uh, but we can do the adaptation for free. We can, uh, we can eat the cost of the, um, of the jacks and the solder and the wires and the plugs and all that good stuff. Uh, and we will, would, be, would be happy to work with some more groups around the state and around the country who need toys adapted. So uh, the time is getting short on that. If you want to get involved in that, reach out to us. We've created an alias called adapt at atmakers.org. That is specific to this event. So if you have any questions, you can email adapt at atmakers.org and we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. I don't see any other questions in the comments. Uh, I will probably push this out. Um, uh, it's going to be live now, but I'll probably push it out as, via Facebook and send it to some of the uh, pages that I manage. You'll probably also see me set up a page for AT Makers over the next couple days. The reason for that is that Facebook requires it for, in order for them to take donations. We've always been a group related entity and that's not going to change. We're not going to move the conversation from the group to the page or anything like that. But you will probably see an official AT Makers page come up in the next day or two so that we can take um, fundraising money through AT, through Facebook um, uh, as well as through PayPal, which does the, the one on the websites. So I don't see any other questions. Uh, Ren, thank you for uh, piping up. If anybody else has any, uh, you can type them below. I'll check them later this, this evening. I hope you guys are having a great, uh, a great weekend. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.